Hey guys, we're going to be doing the deck profile on Volcanics today, and I think to really understand Volcanics as a whole and how they work together, you need to understand the new card because it really ties the deck together. So it's called Blaze Accelerator Reload, and it's got three effects. Um, first and foremost, uh, when it's face up on the field, it's considered a Tri Blaze Accelerator. Its second effect, which is its most important effect, is that during either player's main phase, I can send a Volcanic card from my hand to the graveyard to draw one card. So, that's obviously going to be giving us continual flow throughout our deck, thinning our deck out, drawing cards, you know, every turn possibly if we have the Volcanics. That's why we need to run, you know, a certain amount of Volcanics in the deck to make sure that we always have this effect available to us. On top of that, the third effect is that when this is in the graveyard, during either player's main phase, I can remove it from play to send a Volcanic card to the graveyard. And this becomes relevant uh, mainly with two cards that I'll show you here in a minute. So, um... Tri-Blaze Accelerator when it's on the field. During either player's turn, I can send a Volcanic to draw a card. And when it's in my graveyard, I can remove it to send a Volcanic card to my graveyard. Very important effects, very powerful effects. And we'll talk about the deck list now. But I feel like I need to talk about this first because um, it does tie in with most of the monsters in the lineup. So, first and foremost, um, we have all three Volcanic Rocket. Yeah, I don't have secrets and blinged out deck. Sorry, guys. But uh, the deck works just as well without the uh, high-end stuff, believe it or not. But, uh... We have three Volcanic Rocket, and what it's going to do is when it's normal or special summon, it can search out a Blaze Accelerator card, be that Reload, or any of the two spell cards. Um, we only play one Blaze Accelerator, and even at that, you may not even need to play the one. I'm just testing it right now, but I like it at one right now. Uh, so it's got 1900 attack, it's level 4, um, it's a Pyro Fire, um, none of those... I mean, both of those, I guess, kind of come into play with the deck, and I'll explain them later, but... Basically, it's a nice beefy level 4 that gets us our, our main trap card, because we want to open with the reload. Next we have Volcanic Shell, and this card, even if you've never played Volcanics before, you've probably seen this around, because it's just been around for any deck that needs hand advantage, or uh, goes off hand advantage, or needed a fire at certain parts of the deck. Um, it's just a good card. When it's in the graveyard, I can spend 500 life points to add another one for my deck to the hand, so basically... If ideally I'll open up like a reload and a shell and I'll you know set the reload on my opponent's turn I'll send a shell to draw a card uh, when my turn comes back around I'll pay I'll draw a card for turn pay 500 to add a shell for my deck to the hand and then I can activate reload again and uh, draw another card so you're just drawing a ton it's giving you fodder for your reload um, and uh, it's just a great card so we're gonna run three of those Next is the card that's seen the biggest boost from the Blaze Accelerator Reload, I think, and it's Scattershot. When it's sent to the graveyard, um, it does 500 points of damage to your opponent. But if it was sent by a Blaze Accelerator card, it can actually send the other two copies from your hand or deck to the graveyard to blow up all monsters your opponent control. Now this becomes important because not only can you do this on your turn, it kind of acts as a Raga key that also burns for fi uh, 1,500 points of damage, 500 for each. But also, you can, since we can do it on my opponent's turn, I can send a scatter shot, draw one card, deal 500 points of damage, then activate that scatter shot's effect to send the other two, nuke the field, then do another thousand points of, a da of damage. That's kind of how the chain works. Um, we don't really need to talk too bad, much about chain links. Um, if you just play this deck once on, you know, Dev Pro, you'll kind of see it played out. But uh, it's going to allow me to Raga Key on my opponent's turn and deal 1500 points of damage. And it's really powerful. Not, not only does that work on the effect of pitching to draw, but also if this card's in my graveyard, I can remove it to uh, activate that effect as well. Because it's still a Blaze Accelerator card effect that's sending it to the graveyard. So I'd remove it from play from my graveyard, send one to the graveyard from my deck, and then send the other two from my hand or deck to the graveyard to nuke the field. So this becomes very powerful, and you can abuse this effect multiple times. Um, there have been quite a few games where I've done this three different times to my opponent. Um because I can put these back on my deck with a card that we'll talk about here in a second. But just a very powerful effect, and you can combo it with other things. We'll talk about like a little small combo here in a second, just as an example. But just an, a, an amazing card for the deck with the trap card, and uh, we need to run three. Next is counter, and counter is one of those cards that people will run one of, two of, and three of. Uh, two's the sweet spot for me. I was playing it three for a while. Um, the reason I run it at two still is because it can actually seal the game for you. If you're ahead in life points, and your opponent, um, and you have these in the graveyard, your opponent doesn't have a way to make a Berserk, a uh, Rhapsody and Berserk, or a, you know, a Dweller to get these um, to not work in the graveyard, you can win from 
pretty weird spots. For example, I had a spot where my opponent had a 3100 attack uh, uh, Clifford disc, um, and I couldn't get around it, couldn't really do anything to it, but what I ended up doing was actually MST my own Blaze Accelerator Reload um, and removed it from play to send a counter to the graveyard. I already had one. So what counter does is whenever I take any sort of battle damage, it automatically removes itself from the graveyard um, to deal that damage back to my opponent. So what I did uh, was actually, again, MST'd my own reload, removed it from play to send my second scatter shot. Now imagine I'm staring down the 3100 attack disc on this side. I then normal summoned a volcanic shell and attacked directly into it, or attacked into the disc. It did 3,000 points of damage to me, which is fine because I was at like 4,500, but it did 6,000 points of damage um, because I took 3K and then he took 3,000 and 6K, um, just like that. So a lot of times when your opponent, you have your opponent in that spot, they won't attack because they know they're going to take the damage right back in their face. But if they're in that position, they also have to account for you crashing into their monster. So I do run the two. It's a volcanic name at the end of the day. And if your opponent doesn't have a deck that can get them out of their graveyard, you can actually win by just leaving your your field wide open until you actually have game on, on board um, because they can't attack you without losing. Um, I've been in that position more than once where my opponent's just like, I have no way to get rid of this card. It's just going to sit there and they end up scooping because they're frustrated. Uh, next is Volcanic Doomfire. Now this guy is the boss monster of Volcanics. 3,000 attack, very beefy monster, and a very easy summoning condition now because what we can do is we can send our reload that's face up to the graveyard to special summon this guy. Just has to send a Blaze Accelerator, or try Blaze Accelerator from, from my field to the graveyard to special summon it. It can't be special summon by any other means, you know, things like that. So very cool card. Its effect is when it destroys a monster by battle, it can destroy all other monsters your opponent controls and do 500 points of damage for each. I've actually won games with that effect with the burn damage. Uh, but on top of that, it's just a huge beat stick. So what you'll do a lot of the time, and this is what we're a lot of the time, this is just a play you can do. So we'll say we have this in our hand, this in our field. Uh, we'll say we send a, a shell to the graveyard to draw a card. We then send our blaze, our blaze killer reload to the graveyard to special summon Doomfire. Now this is in the graveyard, we can remove it to send scatter shot, which sends the other two, deals 1,500 points of damage, nukes their field, and we attack directly for 3k. You know, obviously that's just one play you can make using all three of those cards together, but I mean, things like that will show up. Obviously, if you already have the scatter shot, you could send the scatter shot there and do stuff like that. So it's just a really um, nice card to have the to top off the volcanic line. It is a volcanic monster, so you can pitch it for reload, but we're going to be using his effect usually to seal games for us. Um, or his attack to seal games for us, because he can come out of nowhere and really just change the board. Next we have Triple Royal Firestorm Guards, and I would say this is probably, uh, next to Reload, the most important card, <laughs> because it allows you to do your plays over and over. Very cool effect, when it's normal summoned, I can target four Pyro monsters in my graveyard, these are all Pyro, and add them back to my deck to draw two cards. Now, this obviously puts shells back in our deck to add um, using shells effect. Um, it gives us another uh, field nukes. 90% of the time what I'll do is I'll get these three and the shell back and then uh, draw two cards and then pay 500 for shell to add another shell to my hand. Uh, just or one of the shells that are in the graveyard. So it's just really powerful. I think I was saying uh, to myself the other day, I think I would run this card even if I didn't get to draw two cards at the end. Because after you target those four cards and they go back in your deck, you shuffle and draw two. It's, it's an amazing effect, and it keeps the deck going, gives you a ton of advantage, uh, reopens your playbook, essentially, um, for the deck, and you need to run the three that you're allowed to run. It's just super, super good. Um, rounding out the monsters, we have Double Summoner Monk, and I'll show you the play with Summoner Monk real quick. So we'll say, ideally, we open with this card, Normal Summon it. Send a, we'll say we send a Pot of Duality to the Graveyard to activate its effect. And we will special summon a Volcanic Rocket with it. And like I said earlier, Volcanic Rocket gets its effect off being special summoned. So we will then get our reload to our hand. Overlay these two guys for rank four. For the Vobble Chain. Now once you're here, you have a few things that you can do. If, you're, if you don't have any Volcanics in your hand, or you need a, uh, if you need Shell... Uh, you could send, obviously, Rocket 
to make Lavalle Chain send a shell to the graveyard, you can use Shell's effect to pay 500 and get another shell to your hand. Now, if you already had a shell in your hand, you could use Lavalle Chain's effect to, say, stack a scatter shot, so you have a field nuke ready to go. Or if you have a shell and a scatter shot, you can add a Royal Firestorm Guard to the top of your deck to make sure that you can reload your play as soon as you're done. Just a really nice, consistent opening hand um, card, and we want to use it. So there's that. And then the last card is just one blaster. Uh, it is a fire deck at the end of the day, and, you know, we have the material to make this happen. You don't want to use him until you're ready to seal game. Um, I hear the term win more when I explain a card like that, but that's not really the case. Um, like I said with that Doomfire play earlier, we'll just say that um, the 3,000 direct attack and the 1,500 burn wasn't enough. Well, I have two scatter shots now in my graveyard, so I have material for blasters. So if I had a blaster already in my graveyard, I could have just removed those two and done another 2,800 on top of the, what was that, 55 plus 28. That's almost game by itself. So um, that is game, actually. 55 plus 28 55 plus 8 is 63. Yeah, it's 8,300 points of damage. So, I mean, that play right there would get you the game if this was already in the graveyard or in your hand. So, um, obviously, you can send another one of your volcanics to the graveyard to use this effect. So, if you had a shell, we need to get the shell in the graveyard, pitch this shell, pop a card, and then use your shell in the graveyard. Just a really nice card, um, you know, and it works well with the, the fire and the pyros, and there you go. So, our... Spell lineup's not very big, um, and I know we are running two Summoner Monks, but some people may be like, well, that doesn't make sense. Um, it, it's almost never an issue. Uh, if I open Summoner Monk, I'm usually opening one of these six cards right here, which I don't mind pitching to get that Summoner Monk play off. Um, and then we have these guys to back them up. Snatch Steel, Book of Moon, and then we have one Blaze Accelerator. Um, I like this card. Um, it's actually helped me out kind of... If I open, like, a Blaze Accelerator Reload, a and a volcanic uh, rocket or something. I'll use the rocket to search this out um, in some cases. It kind of depends. It's really good spot removal. Basically, I just send a volcanic card from my deck or from my hand to the graveyard to pop one card on my opponent's side of the field. It's not the greatest card, but I was just testing it, and I actually liked it. Um, it was nice spot removal. If I didn't want to do a full nuke with Scattershot, um, it was nice. And, it, you know, it hit the Cliff Forts. Um, the Cliff Fort... The normal summon cliff warts, they can't be hit by uh, Scattershot, because Scattershot is a level 2 monster effect. So only the special summoned ones, the pendulum ones, and the one special summoned off disc can actually be hit with Scattershot. So keep that in mind when you're playing them. Uh, so this was a nice way to just kind of blow them off the field um, if I have a turn. There's, but there'll be a few turns that you're playing where you won't want to attack anyway, so you don't mind taking a turn off and just popping a card off their field. Because um, then if you pop, say, a disc off their field, um, and they go to special summon at the next turn, then you can scatter shot it away, and it would be cool. So on to the traps. Um, we are running a pretty robust trap lineup. Um, we are running the triple reload, which we've already talked about. Um, sadly, but true, va triple Vanny's emptiness is really good in here. Um, just setting up your field, um, draw constantly drawing, and, you know, shutting off their deck. Um, you can do the scatter shot nuke, say to like a... A uh, Burning Abyss player hit a Seer and a Graph, and then when they use, go to use their effects, just flip over the Vanity's Emptiness. Um, just really good. Um, seals out the game. Obviously, there's not a lot of things that you can do against the Necros once they start to get going, but one of the things is just stop them from starting, and that is through Vanity's Emptiness. So we are maining triple Vanity's Emptiness. Um, I would say, I would say Optimum you'll run two to three. If you don't have this card, you can throw in other stun cards. Or other cards that will disrupt your opponent. Um, I'll let you guys kind of decide what those are going to be um, on your own. But I am running triple uh, Vanity's Emptiness. Double Phoenix Chain. I like Phoenix Chain right now. Um, it's it, it's nice. Uh, Breakthrough Skill is great as well. And Breakthrough Skill is not bad in here. But uh, I just prefer Phoenix Chain. I know there's triple MSTs. But um, you know, you'd be surprised how many people will hit that scatter shot um, and leave the MSTs uh, and leave the Phoenix Chains. Um, and I'll be able to get them off. I'm, I'm enjoying Phoenix Chain right now, so I don't, I don't see any reason to move it. That was actually, The reason they're in here is there was actually a build I was testing that ran um, Magic Planter. It ran Triple Fiendish, Triple Vanities, uh, Triple uh, Reload, obviously, and then Double Magic Planter. And it was just a way to speed through your deck and, re, uh, and use, you know, 
maybe dead uh, fiendish chains and stuff like that. It wasn't bad, but I didn't feel like it was needed. I was drawing so much already with reload and firestorm guards, I didn't need it. So double phoenix wing blast. Obviously, like I said, I'm gonna have a ton of cards in my hand, and you know, pitching a shell for a wing blast is nothing. We don't care. Um, you can actually. If you have like multiple reloads, which will happen, you can send one of them with your wing blast, and then you can remove that one out of the graveyard to send a volcanic. Pretty nice. Uh, bottomless, compulse, and warning, and that's the entire deck. Um, it's not didn't require too much explanation. I feel like these cards have been around long enough to where most people know on a basic level what they do. Um, go backwards to the deck like we always do. Then I'll talk about the extra deck, and then we'll be done. Uh, so this is my build. Uh, there, again, there are builds that run like fire and ice hands and things like that, which I, I do plan on trying. You saw the rocket there. These are all kind of out of order right here because we were talking about them, but it's all right. Put Doomfire on top. He is the boss monster of the deck. Um, Doomfire has won me quite a few games. I honestly just put one in just to test, and he was doing really well. So as for the extra deck, I'd say you really only need um, your stable rank fours um, and the Lavable Chain. I really think that... A Volvo Chain does a lot for the deck. Obviously, the plays I talked about. But being able to stack a card on top of your deck, any card that you're... The, the monster card you choose to the top of your deck, and then using your reload to control the draw, control when you get it, that's really powerful. I've actually stacked Doomfire on top of my deck on many occasions. Use Reload's effect to draw, draw it, and then uh, send the reload to the graveyard to special summon the Doomfire. So there's lots of things you can do with the card in the deck, especially where you can control your draw and you need stuff in the graveyard. Just a really good card. I'd actually recommend two. I only own one. Um, it hasn't really come up too much where I've needed more than the one, but there have been like one or two games. Um, the Augusto Emerald obviously can help you reload your deck. You don't need this card. I think it's a good card, so I am going to try the one for right now. And then you just need like staple rank fours. Um, if you have... It, this is actually rank fives. These are from my Clifford deck. Um, just staple rank fours is what you need to round out the deck. So um, if you have them, that's great. I really think the mo you're not going to be winning with your exceed plays. They are going to help you. They may get you, you know, part of the way there. But the way you're going to win is you're going to burn a little bit. You're going to uh, poke for 1900. Then you're going to end the game with like a doom fire or a blaster. That's how I'm winning my games. And some of the games I'm winning with just attacking into my opponent's monster with a volcanic counter uh, in the graveyard is actually pretty interesting because your opponents don't play for that. They don't think of it. They're like, oh, if I don't attack, I'm safe. But they don't realize you got a bunch of little monsters that you can just ram into theirs um, and make go off. One last thing about volcanic counter, I just realized I didn't say it, is that it's a mandatory effect. That means if your opponent attacks, say, with a 2,000 monster over your 1,900 rocket, your uh, Volcanic Counter is going to activate and burn your opponent for the 100 damage that you took. So keep that in mind. It's very important. Um, you have to know when to put the counters in the graveyard. You don't want to put them in there early. You want to put them in there kind of mid to late game where the game's simplified and they may not have a way to get rid of it. So that's the Volcanic deck, guys. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, if you didn't know what the deck did before, hopefully you do now. And uh, pick up the cards, guys. I don't know if they've gone up too much yet, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of the cards that are in here that are not expensive. Obviously, the Lavalvel Chain and the uh, Emptiness are expensive. And if you have to choose between the two, get the Lavalvel Chain and then just fill in, you know, maybe D-Prisons, just other stun cards that uh, kind of keep your opponent off balance because that's what you're really trying to do. So uh, that's the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.